I, I think that was Linda Tate, but like I said, we was waiting on Aretha. We closed the door to Aretha, so I think that was Linda. I'm not sure, but everybody, Aretha is here. <laughs> Aretha made it on the call. Aretha, we didn't know what we was going to do, but great to have you on the call. Um, ladies and gentlemen, tonight is going to be a very special night, a very special training call. Um, this training call means everything to you as well as as it means a lot to the individuals that you either already have on your team or that you're going to be recruiting on your team. Every once in a while, everybody knows I typically make this announcement. It's a public service announcement, and it has everything to do with the way that you receive the training tonight. Okay, so I'm going to say it again, and then we're going to move forward. Again, tonight what we're going to be discussing is how to become a better teammate. How can you be a better teammate? We know what we're looking for. We know we want some top performers. We know we want some leaders. We know we want some great people. We know we want to recruit some great people. But before we recruit these great people, we need to make sure that we have, and we turned over every stone as far as us being great teammates. Okay, so let me make this public service announcement, and then we'll go ahead and move forward. If you have any questions during the course of the call, hit five star on your phone. I'm going to be flying through this information so quickly tonight, I'm not going to be able to remember to open up the line after everything that we discussed. So, again, at any point, I'm going to be on the controls. If you have a question about anything that we're talking about, I want you to hit five star on your phone. Five star on your phone will let me know that you have a question. Once I see you have a question, I will stop what I'm doing, and we will come to you for your question. Okay, so public service announcement. Here's the public service announcement is, the best way, what I want you to do tonight, Okay, public service announcement. What I want everybody to do tonight is this. I don't want you to listen to the words that we're going to be talking about tonight for the training. I don't want you to listen to it as if I'm training you. I don't want you to listen to the training card. Now, for those of you that are just getting started, don't jump to conclusions. It's going to make sense once you let me finish. I don't want you to listen to this training call tonight as if you're learning it for yourself. This call that we're going to be doing tonight, this training call that we're doing tonight, is not one of those calls where you need to learn for you. The training call tonight, I want you to learn this. I want you to receive this training information tonight as if you we're responsible for teaching it to someone else as soon as this call is over. Again, don't, I want you to learn this information tonight as if you were going to be held responsible for teaching it to someone else tonight. It's a big difference. Slight change, big difference. Slight change, big difference. Tonight, I want you to learn this information not for yourself. I want you to learn it as if you were going to be held responsible for teaching it to someone else. Okay, with that being said, let's get right into it. We're talking about how to become a better teammate, okay? Um, Let's just pull up my notes here. Okay, here we go. First things first. In regards to being a better teammate, I have to, let, let's, let's get out the obvious stuff, all right? And some of this stuff is going to be kind of heavy for you guys, but this is real business conversation, like real business. And if you don't have any business yet or your business is in a slump right now, this may fly over your head, but that's why we record our calls so you can go back and listen to it when your time is right to hear it but I still want you to learn it as if you had to be teaching it to someone else tonight. Okay, so first things first, let's all agree 
from the top all the way down to the bottom. Let's all agree. We all have negative thoughts about our business. If, if we can't agree there, then this is probably not the call for you. At any given point during any course of any day, we have all had a negative thought about our business. Some of those thoughts may be, I'm not going to do this business anymore. This plan doesn't work. Or it could be, I can't get any leads. I don't think I could do this business. Or it could be, oh, my gosh, I'm so tired. These training calls are terrible. They're not training us anything. Or it could be, oh, my gosh, I don't have any checks coming in the mail. Or it can be, oh, my gosh, it's taking me so long to get to RSD. I, I, it's my sponsor. Oh, it's, it, it's my cross line. Oh, it's the noise that's making that they're making on the call. Oh, it's the trainer's accent. Oh, it's the presenter. Oh, they don't have any meetings in my area. I can't do this business. There's no providers. It could be, I mean, and, and then it could go really negative. I mean, we joked about it at the last event in Raleigh. I was just giving an example. Everybody knows uh, Carl Ryan's dress is really sharp. And if you don't know if Carl Ryan's dress is really sharp, come, in, come to Raleigh this Saturday and judge what he's going to be wearing. And I know Carl, if anybody knows Carl, Carl might have already had a suit that he was going to be wearing laid out for this Saturday, but now that I just said that, Carl might break out in something. That, that he might go in his bag of tricks and dress really sharp. But I, I say all of that to say, you may not like somebody's appearance. Sometimes it's negative, right? Sometimes it's, well, I don't like the way that person dresses, or I don't like the way that person talks, or whatever, whatever, whatever. Listen, we all have negative thoughts. And it, it, the, the, what, I'm, what I'm telling you for the number one thing is it's okay to have negative thoughts. Your sponsor may not even want me to tell you this, but if your sponsor doesn't want me to want you to hear this, chances are your sponsor either just got started or your sponsor is very unproductive, okay? So that's, that's it. But here's the, the truth is, is that everybody – even top performers, even the million-dollar earners, even our national vice presidents, even the national sales directors, even our president's club members, even our regional sales directors, what happens is we get frustrated first. Frustration happens first, and then the negative thoughts start to build on top of the frustration. So number one is it's okay to have negative thoughts, but here's the golden rule. The golden rule is, you never pass bad information down to your team, okay? And we're all guilty of it, right? We're, we're all guilty of it because sometimes when a negative thought comes in our, our mind, we don't have any control. And we just want to tell the closest person or the first person that we can get on the phone. And sometimes that's our teammate that we just recruited in the business. Sometimes... That's somebody that's not even on our team, but they're in the business, and they're the first person that responded to your negative message or your negative thought. What I'm here to tell you is if you want to build this business and you want to build it right, do not, pass, do not make it a habit to pass bad information down to your team. I have a solution for you. What we do is we pass bad information up. What a good teammate does is a good teammate is disciplined. A good teammate is so disciplined that they're going to hold their tongue and they're not going to pass bad information down. They're going to pass that bad information. A good teammate passes the bad information up. I'll give you guys a quick example, and then we'll go to number two, okay? And my sponsor and everybody in my upline will tell you that chances are I could be very – over the years, I have been one of their biggest headaches. But they absolutely love it. They love the fact that I stress my complaint 
my anger, my frustration to them. The reason why we don't want, the reason why a great teammate doesn't pass bad information down, because when you pass it to your new teammate, what happens is that messes with your money, right? Because not only are you being negative, because listen, when you're negative, you can't, re, you can't be as productive as you should be. That's a fact, right? Negative, it's, it's rare that you'll see somebody negative making money, right? It's, it's very rare. That's a fact, okay? So, again, if you have negative, when you have your negative thoughts, get your sponsor on the line. That's what a great teammate does, okay? A bad teammate is the person that's saying, well, no, I never have negative thoughts. I never get frustrated. I never do. No, that's impossible. If you're building this business and you're actively building this business, you're going to have negative thoughts. The only thing that I wanted to tell you tonight is, in regards to those negative thoughts, is you want, it's okay, but just pass it upwards. Anytime, if you're on my team, for example, Tell me everything that you're feeling, all the frustrations that you're having, the plan doesn't work, you didn't get your card on time, um, the trainer was terrible that night, the presenter was late. The, 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 tell me all that. Call me, text me, email me, and tell me all the bad things that's going on in your business and in your life. And we, at the end of the day, because we know we're building a business, there's going to be ups and downs, we will together get through it. Again, that's what a great teammate does. If you've made a mistake and you've passed bad information down before, uh, listen, th that was yesterday. This is your, you now know. So now you're going to be held accountable. We agreed that, listen, you're going to have negative thoughts when building any business. I mean, some of the most prolific business owners that we've seen in history have all questioned even if they should continue to do this, their business, whatever that may be, whatever that was. But they all tell you the same exact thing. The story always ends the same. They were smart enough to just stay in the game, right? So don't pass, that's number one. Don't pass bad. You're going to have negative thoughts. You're going to have frustrations. Express those frustrations to your upline, not your downline. Okay, and never, ever, ever keep it bottled in. Never keep it bottled in. Because bottled in is how slumps happen, and then you get stuck, and then you get frustrated, and then it becomes like a cancer. Right? You, you don't want, you, you know, with a cancerous thing, you, you want to get to where it's at, and you want to get it out. Right? Get it out of the body. Okay, so that's, that's, uh, that's number one. Let's go. Let's go to number two. Number two is okay. Number two is shows commitment to the team. A great teammate is committed to the team. Okay? We're not talking about being a good teammate. We're not talking about just being a teammate. What we're talking about is we're talking about being a great teammate. Okay? And what a great teammate does, one of the things that a great teammate does, is they show their commitment to the team. Some of you have heard me say this phrase, you know, we don't just say teamwork. We actually live it, right? Anybody can say teamwork makes the dream work. Ain't that what they say? Everybody says teamwork makes the dream work. But you weren't on the call to announce your name. How does teamwork make the dream work if we don't even know you're there? Teamwork makes the dream work. There's a training. There's a major event happening within a couple hours to where you're at, but you're nowhere to be found. Teamwork makes the dream work. Right? A great teammate shows commitment to the team. A great teammate is always asking. Like one of the, I'll give you guys a great example, right? 
for some of you that came on early, you heard a, a lady named Cherie, right, out of New Jersey. Now, for those of you that are just getting started, I, I'm just giving you guys an example of showing commitment to the team, right? Your actions, your actions, your actions. We rather you, your actions say teamwork as opposed to your words saying teamwork, right? Because like I said, anybody can say teamwork makes the dream work. But uh, we have two teammates, right, that I just want to share this quick story with that I think really exemplifies showing a commitment to the team. One of them is Zykira Casado, right? She does the trainings on Monday, right? Zykira is typically the person for anybody in the MIT group on Facebook. Zykira is the person who typically is sending out the messages, giving us updates, when is this, or uh, this is this person's birthday, or this is when the co-op is, this is how you get into the co-op, this is this, this is this, congratulations, new promotion. That's Zykira. She's showing her commitment to the team by making sure that we're plugged in. Now, for those of you that keep coming on the Monday calls for the social media, guess what? Zykira has been blocked on Facebook, right? So being that Zykira is blocked on Facebook for the past couple weeks, I don't know how this happened. This is none of my business. It really doesn't matter. But one way or another, Cherie, right, one of our teammates, Cherie, she actually just just took charge of that. I mean, she just stepped into that role. I mean, she just stepped into that role, and we haven't skipped a beat as a team, right? That's just another way that someone's showing commitment to the team. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a million different examples. For all these events that's coming up, showing a commitment to the team could be you just coming up to the person that's uh, the team leader at the meeting that you're at, and you could say, hey, do you guys need any help? What needs to be done? Like, what can I do to help this thing? Right? That's, that's, a, a, that's another example of showing a commitment to the team. Right? Another thing that's showing commitment to the team could be something as simple as, hey, this month I'm going to get into the Centennial Club. Or, hey, this month I'm going to become the next team regional sales director. Hey, my commitment to the team this month is to, listen, if the presenter is late, I'm going to hop on the call and I'm going to do the introduction and welcome every, all of our teammates to the call. Um, you know, a commitment to the team could be, you know, you, you posting something on the Facebook MIT group. Right? A commitment to the team could just be you monetizing and implementing what you learn here on these training calls. Right? So a great teammate, again, they show commitment to the team. Again, if you have any questions, if, if you have, any, if you have a, a question, all you can simply do is you can, you can hit five star on your phone. And I will come to your question. I am on the controls. Okay, so now, let me see. We're going to go to number three. And number three, I know it's going to be a tough one. But remember, this is not about you. This is for you to absorb this information as if you're going to have to teach it to someone else tonight. Okay, so the number three is, They're consistently respectful and supportive. Okay? Consistently respective and supportive. Okay, so the supportive side, you know, that comes a little bit in regards to the last one we were just talking about, right? Showing a commitment to the team. That, that's a form of it. But supportive, again, and I think this is in the seven core commitments. I think they put it in there perfectly. Listen, if you have an event that's going on in your city or within like a 200, 300 miles, get to that event. That's showing support. Because what I was taught very early in my business, oh, excuse me. See, that was respectful for me to say excuse me. I don't know if you guys heard that, but I just belched. And it was by accident. But I was just being respectful, and I just, <laughs> it just came out. It, I didn't mean to do it. Um, but back to the to the point is um, supportive. Listen, uh, like I said, I was I was taught very early coming into this business that 
you there, there's going to come a point when it comes to these events and these phone calls and these training calls. There's a time where you need you need what's going to be happening at these meetings, right? That's one side. Uh, I like when Dr. Phil says, no matter how flat you make a pancake, there's always two sides to it, <laughs> right? So here's the one side is you need to be at the meeting. You need to be on the call. The flip side is, if you don't need the meeting, guess what? The meeting needs you. So again, supportive is, hey, you don't, you don't think you need the meeting? Like, I, you guys know, it's the same thing for these calls. I don't need to be on these calls. I, I, Monday through Thursday, I don't need to be on these calls. I don't need to. That's a fact. I don't need to. The reason why I get on these calls, uh, these training calls, the reason why I get on is for the other reason. It's that sometimes the calls, sometimes the meetings, sometimes the events need me. You guys don't know how, it, how, how big it is. I try to stress this to us every time I get an opportunity, right? When, when you hear these names being announced, hey, this is Cherie out of New Jersey. Hey, this is Carl Ryan out of uh, Virginia. Hey, this is Rosalind Perkins out of North Carolina. Hey, this is Evelyn out of North Carolina. Hey, this is like you're out of North Carolina. Hey, this is Earlene from Brooklyn. You don't know what that does to the call. So, you know, that's showing support. Get to the events, right? And, if, again, if you don't have an event in your city, create one, and we'll help you do it, right? We start off small, get you in a library where it's free, or we get you at a Panera Bread where it's free, or we get you at a Starbucks where it's free. Shoot, we have people doing them at McDonald's. We have people starting meetings at a park, the local park, <laughs> Right? So, again, that's a, another great way of showing support, okay? Um, now, in regards to the respect, I mean, that's, you know, some people believe to get respect, you have to give respect. I mean, that's, that's what they say is the golden rule, right? But I, I think I, we're, we're not talking about being a teammate. We're not talking about being a good teammate. We're talking about being a great teammate. So when it comes to respect, the reason why I love this one being as one of the ways you could be a great teammate in business is because there's another level to being a great like the and if you if you guys know about the degrees between boiling water like 211 and 212 you know it's just one degree difference between a solid and a liquid right it's the same thing with between being good and being great you can ask any athlete right is a, a huge difference right, between a champion and not being a champion. It's a big difference. It's slight, but it's a big difference. And believe me, I know that because Charles Barkley was my favorite player almost ever, right, until a guy named Kobe Bryant came along, and that's when – like, but I didn't know, right? I, did, I didn't know about championship. I just thought it was a great player. And then when I seen – Kobe playing when he was playing in high school because I was in New Jersey. So, you know, Lower Marion's right there. So they was broadcasting him everywhere, right? Like, wow, this guy's really great. And eventually he started winning championships. But my point is that there's a, a very slight difference between being a good teammate and a great teammate. And when it comes to respect, like I said before, um, one of the easiest things to do is to be re disrespectful to a disrespectful person. It's one of the easiest things you can do. It's a great, it gives you great reason to do. But here in business, guys, um, the reason why they put respectful in here when it comes to being a great teammate is because there's going to be times where someone on your team, whether they're in direct, they're either directly in your team or there's someone else that's on the team, you have to be respectful. Because if you don't, it's going to mess up the business, right? So I think it's Jay-Z, I think he says, you know, when the, when the family feuds, nobody wins, right? And that's the same thing with a team, right? When the team is feuding, nobody wins. 
Because the truth is, if you have, you know, if you have a team, right, you can't have a team within a team. That doesn't happen, right? Like, overall, that's just like you can't have, like, some people, they'll say, well, our family, like, I have a family, but you have different families within a family. Well, that's not a real family, right? And it's the same thing when it comes to a team, and that's why respect is high up on this list in regards to becoming a great teammate, right? So we, we, we have to develop that skill as well, right? You want to be respectful, and the best way that you can be respectful is just, again, know there's a big difference between being a good teammate and a great teammate, okay? Now, I do – this is the last thing I wanted to touch, uh, touch on because I know it's, it flies heavy, not – necessarily on our team, but I do have to say this for the new people that join our team because I need you guys and I'm responsible for letting you guys know the culture that we have here on this team, right? And it's, it's, it's flooding rapidly, not just through the business world around the world, but it's flooding in a lot of different environments. And it's actually, it's, some of you have, may have heard the term, um, I might say it in a way where you may not have heard it before, um, but one of the best ways that you can also be- become a great teammate is um, I, how can I, this is like a bonus. And I wanted to properly put this in context. Again, if you guys have a question, we're going to get out of here. But if you have a question, uh, just hit five star on your phone. I'm going to make sure that I come over to you um, just for any questions in regards to what we spoke about tonight, the, just a few things we spoke about in regards to being a great teammate. And hopefully you guys are getting something from the, the message, the, the training that we're talking about tonight. Um, I wanted to talk about this, and I I believe our national vice presidents do a great job. They talk about this, you know, in in their way, right? They have their own way of talking about the same thing, and I have my own way that I like to talk about it. But it's the same thing. But maybe with what I say tonight, it will somehow in 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 uh, it will somehow make a connection with someone especially with our new teammates, about the culture on this team. So in, on the culture on this team, what happens is if somebody does something good, we celebrate it, right? That, that's, that's the culture. You know, like it or not, that's the culture. Because what we believe here on this team is if you do good, we do good. Right? That, that's it. Now, let me tell you, the reason why I just wanted to make this a little bonus as we get out of here, we're going to wrap this up next week. Again, I'm going to come back next week, and we're going to hit this again. We're going to give you some more things on how to be a great teammate, because I want to make sure that this event this Saturday and all the other events that's happening in Memphis and California, I want to make sure that we all have some substance and some new things to talk about about being a great teammate because we're going to be – I want our eyes to be open for, for us to see what what was great teammates about and what were we lacking, what, were, what did we do really good, what great teammate stuff. We should be looking for these things. But – so, again, the culture is if someone on the team does something good and we know about it, we celebrate that really, really quickly. We celebrate it. And here's, here, remember, no matter how flat you make a pancake, there's always two sides to it, right? So this is not the world of utopia. So I do have to tell you the other side. And the other side makes you not so good of a teammate. So somebody does something good, you know about it, you celebrate it. If somebody does something good and you don't put any energy behind it, well, guess what? That doesn't make good for anybody. And not not only that, you're going to sit in that. 
And I don't know about you if you've ever stepped in a pile of crap accidentally. I mean, the first thing I want to do, well, maybe a, a pile of crap isn't a great example. Maybe I just pissed somebody off and messed up your whole evening, no, how sensitive you are. So let's just use uh, a piece of gum. If you ever stepped in a piece of gum, a wet piece of gum, you know what you do? The first thing that you do is you try to get it off your foot, right? Makes sense. Try to get it off your foot. So what you want to do is we have to celebrate. And it can be just really quick because what happens is if you know about a celebr- if you know about something that's going to be celeb- that needs to be celebrated and you don't celebrate it, guess what? You're holding back an opportunity to be supportive to somebody on your team. And I'm telling you this now, the better you look, the better we look. You want to quote the write down before we get out of here. Here it goes. We're talking about how to be a great teammate. Here's the quote. We're going to close this out with. Here's the quote. Together, the ants ate the elephant. My name is Demetrius Brown. I'm a President's Club member here with this incredible company. Hey, ma! I'm on TV! (laughs) Hehehehehehe <laughs>